Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Liz, um, the host of Athena's Garden. Uh, before I begin today's topic, I just wanted to reiterate my little disclaimer that with anything you watch or read, not just here on my channel but anywhere else, um, to please, please have your own experience with any of the information and to always know that you are a sovereign being and should always practice discernment. My goals of creating these videos is that I want to support any viewer on their separate journeys and to encourage anyone to be more conscientious in, their, in all aspects of their lives. If you enjoy these topics, especially about the intersectionality of creativity, science, and spirituality, I hope you'll like and subscribe and join our community here on YouTube, but also on Discord and Instagram. With that being said, let's get started. Today I'm going to talk about how I was guided back to the Akashic Record. So I'll briefly introduce the Akashic Record and I'll be sharing my personal journey in this lifetime. I thought about it for a long time, but I decided to present this video's content with my personal anecdote for a few reasons. Um, as with like, you know, case studies, which would mean, um, you know, my clients' records, um, I would need their permission and consent as I do respect their privacy and confidentiality. So at least with this video, I want to keep it simple and just use myself. Um, in the example. Um, the other reason is everyone's path is um, it's going to be different. So my journey might look nothing like yours. I have to say that I felt really fortunate growing up um, at least uh, nine years in, in Taiwan. Um, it's a culture where going to see a psychic healer or energy healer um, is very, very normal. <laughs> And I had also had access to Mandarin and Taiwanese language television shows where reputable healers and teachers would go on television and talk about their journey. And as a young adult, I listened to their personal stories and it also helped me feel a lot less anxious because I knew my experiences was normal in a sense at least in this community, right? Um, this was the days before there was YouTube. Um, it's also interesting, while it's not gonna be the same for me, it was helpful to hear their stories, like how it happened, when it happened, what kinds of deities they'll be working with, um, you know, deities or uh, angels or ascended masters. Um, and how they work with them is completely unique. So I always thought that to be tremendously helpful. And finally, I wanna share that anyone can learn to read their own Akashic records. Um, it's whether you want to or not, and I do believe that anyone can benefit from information found in their own Akashic records. If this is your first time hearing about the Kashic Records, just know that when I first came across it in, in 2021, I had to go on my own journey of deep learning in order to discern for myself whether this resonates with me or not. It turns out it's a very familiar and comfortable space for me since I tend to be very analytical, cerebral, and a uh, philomath. Um, it's people who love learning. <laughs> um, the Akashic Records, also known as the Book of Life, is compared to an energetic library um, located in the eighth dimension. It documents everything that ever existed in the universe. So everything, <laughs> every living being, um, humans, animals, planets, DNA, other beings, and non-living objects, businesses, buildings. Um, yeah, you name it, it's recorded. Every thought, every intention, um, desire, whether it's past, present, or future possibilities are captured and recorded. The term is derived from Sanskrit's word akasha, meaning sky, space, or ether. The term was coined and brought to our modern lexicon by um, theosophists and anthroposophists in the 19th century and continues to be studied and expanded on today. It is referenced across 
early Eastern and Western religious practices and philosophy, as well as referenced and used by uh, physicists, scientists, inventors, mathematicians, and polymaths or multi-potentialites. Contrary to what it might appear at first, if you've never heard it, it's like, is that a new age thing? And it's actually not because it is much older than the Abrahamic religions. If you thought Google was amazing, just wait till you see the Akashic records. One of the main questions I receive from my friends and family is, is it safe if I go into my Akashic records or if I have a reader going to my Akashic records, um, will negative entities um, access it too? Like, can they access me if I open up that channel? And the short answer is, is no. Um, the Akashic records are, um, essentially protected and gated by the Akashic Record gatekeepers and pe and the entities that work there. So no, um, the, you know, negative entities, they're not an energetic match with the Akashic Records to begin with. And so they cannot access it. Um, so with anything, um, you know, you do have to be careful if you're trying to access on your own, um, when you're in that space you want to make sure you're in there not a place that looks like it so yeah there is um you know something that you have to be aware of but it's not like it's dangerous if somebody reads your your records they have to obtain multiple permissions in order to to enter your records when i'm in the akashic records i'm doing the work as my higher self so in some if i have any fears or doubts or any energy um it actually disables you know the person from you know in my in this case i'm me if i have any fear or doubts it actually um doesn't let me tune in and access the records i hope that makes sense so i hope by sharing my story of how i Return to the Akashic Records will help you feel a little less alone, um, even though we each have our own unique paths to tread. Um, as mentioned, I grew up in Taiwan and lived in South America as well as Southeast Asia. And so I would describe my family being spiritual but non-denominational. So when I was around 18, 19, my parents were introduced to a book called, um, it's, a, it's a Mandarin, um, it's called Huo Ling Huo Xian. I actually still have the book here. Um, and in the book, the author documents um, many case studies and it talks about how souls and reincarnation works and how your past lives can affect your current ones. So, um, the author collected all the case studies while assisting in the office of a psychic teacher and healer. Um, and she goes by Huang Lao Shi, but I call her Master Huang uh, in English. So um, when she sees clients, um, she helps them with all things spiritual and otherworldly. Um, so yeah, I went to see her when I was 18, maybe 19 years old, and um, she explained to me where my soul came from and that in, in the past life that she saw, I was working as a scribe, assisting deities with administrative duties, with record keeping, sorting, and filing. And as she was relaying those words to me in the session, um, I saw images or video, you know, a video footage of myself um, working in the library, mostly, you know, by myself, um, sorting records and filing, um, like a lot of books and paperwork. And I saw myself there working and I looked really happy and the energy there was very, um, very peaceful, but it's also very vibrant, if that makes sense. It's like almost pulsating, like very beautiful. Um, and I looked really happy. So, um, I didn't know that that place was called Akashic Records that I saw. Um, I, and I didn't tell her that I saw this, you know, during the reading, cause I was just like, absorbing and taking it all in. At the time, Master Huang also explained to me that based on, you know, the record, because she describes it as like, almost like a hard drive. She goes in and, and pulls it out and reads your file. That's how she described her work. And um, she said, written on my file is 
For this lifetime, I have a similar job description like hers, that I'm a fellow psychic and light worker. And I can do this work part-time, meaning I can pick a variety of professions that involve helping others and being of service to others, or I can do it full-time like her, have an office, have a staff, and just you know see clients and help clients day in and day out. She said I had the choice. Um, and I can choose what works best for me. So at the time being in that, you know, college age, I asked her, I was contemplating this, these few options, you know, um, a counseling, psychologist, teacher, and lawyer. And she's like, yeah, all of those uh, professions fit the bill. So you can give it a go. And I thought, yeah, I'll give it a try part-time, whatever that means. And then maybe eventually I can do it full-time. So we shall see. <laughs> it was just really ex interesting experience because it was the first time I had anything that I associated like like when she's speaking I can know that she's telling me the truth if that makes sense and um, later on I you know in recent recent years I realized that is a perk of being claircognizant is um, you know it's like that sudden knowing um, it's like instant psychic downloads with you know dense information sometimes it's not as dense but other times it's so dense that it takes time to decode and um, unpack um, and then the confusing part is it comes out as my own thoughts so sometimes I don't know if it's messages for me or it's just my own thoughts um, so I would come across things and like reading or like, you know, someone talking and be like, mm, I don't know if that's true or yeah, that is true. So um, that's kind of how clear cognizance works for me. Um, anyway, I digress. Let's get back to the topic. <laughs> that's why I need notes that I have here. Otherwise, I can just go on and on about, you know, X, Y and Z. <laughs> So um, fast forward to 2020. So that was when I was 18, 19. Now um, in the story, I'm in 2020. And it was during the global pandemic. And in California, um, we had the mandatory um, shelter in place. So I was by myself as my husband was already here in Tokyo uh, working. And so I had to do a lot of uh, introspection and I was also like organizing my books, getting ready to move to Tokyo. And I came across my old Buddhist philosophy books um, from college. And since I was already listening to guided meditation and other, um, you know, meditation uh, videos, um, I just thought to myself, oh yeah, like maybe I should just put in put this in my search bar um, and see what comes up because at the time I saw like the Diamond Sutra it was the version um, with commentary by Thich Nhat Hanh um, and so I was like yeah maybe I'll just put in the Diamond Sutra and see what pops up because I felt like it was calling out to me I felt like it would be a good thing to listen to since it has to do with the perfection of wisdom and seeing through illusions I was like yeah let's do that <laughs> So I just typed it in and I listened to a few talks in both Mandarin and English. And so one of the speakers um, with the commentary and explanations in Mandarin, he had a bunch of all their videos. I'm like, okay, well, I'll just keep watching. I like what he said. I like his interpretation of the sutra. And in another video, he's like, yeah, actually, I'm from the Pleiades and I channel some of this information from the Akashic Records. And I'm like, the Akashic Records, what's that? <laughs> so um, uh, this channel is a Mandarin. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to click on it and think about it. And of course, because of that, the YouTube algorithm pulled out more information that I'm interested in, like, for example, different types of light workers and also um, Dr. David Hawking's um, map of consciousness, things like that. It's all like in there. And I was like, mm, yeah, this, this sounds great. Mm, yeah, this, this is interesting to me. I was all for it. So a couple days later, I found myself at my local bookstore. And this bookstore has a lot of like um, spirituality philosophy books, um, in addition to other books, <laughs> but they also sell crystals and all that jazz. So I was in there because I wanted to, you know, reward myself and take a break. It was, um, this is now 2021 and I'm like, okay, 
I'm going to, um, you know, buy a crystal <laughs> uh, for my nephews. And I was like, yeah, yeah, checking out. And I'm like, wait a minute. I remember something about the Akashic Records. Like, is there a book about it? Like, maybe I can learn more about it. So I just turned around as, you know, I was about to check out, but I, I turned around and um, I went to the section that the book could be in and like, bam, it was right in front of me. <laughs> So it was this book um, by Linda Howe and it's titled How to Read the Akashic Records, Accessing the Archive of the Soul in this Journey. And it was right in front of me. So I was like, all right, well, I guess it's not a very subtle sign that I should take this book home and give it a try. So um, yeah, as I went home, I quickly read through the whole thing and got prepared and um and i'm paraphrasing right now uh, in one of the early chapters it says if this book called out to you it's your invitation into the kashik records i'm like yeah yeah everything sounds great so i follow the protocol or the pathway prayer in a meditation i did all the steps and in a meditation, I felt like I entered the Akashic Records, um, but when I tried to view anything, it was empty. So I was like, I definitely felt like I entered it. Uh, I don't know what your Akashic Records look like. Mine looks like La Sagrada Familia by Gaudi. That's what it looks like inside. And it's very beautiful and I see the books, but I don't see anybody there. I was hoping that my gatekeeper, um, masters and loved ones would be there to greet me like the book promised, but I couldn't see or hear anyone. So I was in there, you know, I visualize a book. I visualize my question that I'm gonna ask. I go in there and I open the book and it's empty. So I couldn't see anything. I couldn't hear anything. Um, I, I tried the other suggestions, um, not from the book, but <laughs> I was like, well, I read through the book. Maybe I should find some other information. And there was another speaker on YouTube. I can't remember her name that says that maybe you can try playing it like, like a video, like in the AV room, you know, in the library, you can play a video and maybe something will pop up. I also tried that method. So I tried a total of three times and each time it was the similar experience where I felt like I entered the space like I'm in the right place based on my intuition but I didn't know why I couldn't see or hear anything I wanted to talk to my guides I wanted to ask them questions and so I thought to myself yeah I was feeling discouraged about my experience but maybe it's happening for a reason maybe the timing isn't right maybe I need a little more guidance and so um at that point, I was called to do research to find a mentor or a reader to do the reading for me because this must be happening for a reason. I just kind of trusted that. And so it was um, 2021 and I narrowed it down to two mentors and teachers that I wanted to work with. But um, unfortunately, they weren't taking on any appointments, readings or new clients at the time. So I just thought, well, it's a sign. I just have to you know, continue with my move and all the work that I had going on in my in my day job as a hair makeup artist and agent and moving to Tokyo. There was a lot going on already. So I just thought maybe it wasn't the right time. To make a long story short, in the beginning of 2022, I reached out to another psychic healer. His name is Hillis. Um, and I met him a few years ago, but it was my other friend who was working with him for healing and she recommended him to me and I'm like yeah I think maybe I need to reach out to him and I explained to him what happened in my consultation and he thought well I recommend this five session of healing for you and it was a lot of like inner child healing um, meditation and whatnot and I just trusted the process I feel like I had to do this I was just called to do it in that order so um, five beautiful sessions and um, then um, I completed that and I moved to Japan so a lot happening during that time and then after I was here for a couple months and settled in a little more I was already beginning to take Japanese classes um, I was ready to take the next steps to you know get help about the Akasha workers because I was still being called towards it so yeah um august of 2022 an appointment opened up 
and I grabbed it right away. I was, I was ready. Um, and I ended up um, receiving a reading from Natasha, the Cosmic Empress. Um, and the reading really helped me unlock some of the missing pieces. Um, in the reading uh, that Natasha did for me, um, Natasha helped me confirm that I am mainly clear cognizant. Through my Akashic Record Keeper and my higher self, I received initiations and light codes that helped open up some of the channels for me, um, so to speak. And I got to connect with my higher self more directly, or they were giving me um, advice on how to best do that. And I just followed, you know, in my own timing and my own method and at the end of the session um, Natasha had recommend her class that teaches you how to do how to do the Akashic Records reading and I was like yeah I'm interested in taking the class but for some reason I felt like my intuition was telling me to hold off on signing up for that class so I did but as soon as she announced this other class um, I was like yes that's the class I have to take. So I took it in that order. I took her new class and then I took the Akashic Records class. So it was like about three months of very intensive learning, but I was ready for it. So um, yeah, I guess my guides had wanted me to take the classes in that order. So I did all the homework. I, you know, I still had my day job and I was still studying Japanese and acclimating to life in Tokyo. and. Any time that I had, I was diving into the material, doing all the homework and exercises, as well as like I felt like I was still working on it while I was sleeping. But you know, I was just ready for it. I can't say for sure that it applies for everyone, but at least in my case, is that it was difficult for me to connect with my guides because I'm here in the third dimension. I'm trying to access the records in the you know higher dimensions, and um, it appears that my guides like to hang out in the higher dimensions. So the signal is kind of you know different or weaker, so to speak. Um, I just had to tune in to a different frequency in order to connect with them. So that was what was happening to me in the beginning which is why when i went in there was nobody there and i was like hello hello where is everyone <laughs> um but when i finally got to connect reconnect with them it was like a big reunion you know they were there all along and uh it was um, a re really nice re reunion for me other healers that i've come across along the way on my journey you know they have suggested like why don't you take some classes because there are people who will teach you how to hone in your gifts and um, develop your psychic abilities further and at the time I looked into a few options but I just never committed to any um, in a way like the timing was just not right for me and even as I'm recording this now it's just so strange like mystical, magical, how everything just kind of lined up perfectly for me when it was supposed to happen. It's like all those synchronicities. Um, I won't lie that it was not an easy 18 years because ever since like Master Hua had told me that I'm supposed to be on this journey, um, you know, and when it happens is not up to me. She told me that right off the bat and so um, knowing that I knew I had to just trust but during that time during the 18 years I often wonder like when is it gonna happen why is it not happening now how is it gonna happen and if am I still a psychic if I don't have any special powers right now can I heal others if I'm still healing myself those questions I've pondered um, for a while I've concluded that um, when it comes to your own journey, it is often harder to remain objective. And so it's very important to have a community. Um, teachers talk to other teachers, psychotherapists talk to other psychotherapists. And at least like for example, in my creative artists community, um, in my industry, you know, we often lean on each other for wisdom and to help each other through difficult times and navigate different uh, new terrains as uh, things are always changing, technology is always changing. I realized that this is no different than other 
professions. So even if you're a healer or a seeker of truth, um, you, it's really nice to lean on a community. Since I started uh, reading the Akashic records for myself and others, um, I have gone in to um, ask questions about my past um, and viewed and reviewed things, uh, not just for myself, but also asked information about the cosmos. So kind of, you know, rolling it back to the personal examples, like I, I did confirm that, you know, what I saw with my third eye what Master Huang was saying, like it is true, um, you know, I did work in the Akashic Records, that's why it's calling me very strongly. And um, the other silly example, you know, I shared in my previous video that I was indeed a man. Um, in my last human reincarnation, um, uh, it was, you know, 15th or 16th century Europe. So it was uh, confirming to um, affirming or confirming to know uh you know what i suspected all along if that makes sense if the akashic records is calling out to you in any way perhaps you may want to explore further and maybe when you do access akashic records it would be even more expansive than you could have imagined um, does seem to be that way based on the readings i've done for others and myself what ha what it has done for me in my journey as you can already imagine because I you know used to work there um, it called me pretty strongly and it's a great fit for me and how my brain works and it is work I really do enjoy um, as a super nerd in this lifetime I'm not a bit surprised that I was a super nerd um, in my multi-dimensional self so if you might be interested in receiving a reading with me, I'd be honored to help you on your journey. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you for watching and please do let me know in the comments and share with me your thoughts, um, questions, or share with me your journey if you've accessed the Akashic Records and what that was like for you. And um, if there's any topics you would like me to cover, please do let me know. And until next time, bye!